गुड इवनिंग संडे इवनिंग मजिशियन स्पेशल एपिसोड and today we have a very super duper special guest with us uh rupa pai many of you know her and those of you don't know her do a google check and find out i'll just introduce her briefly there were some technical issues because of which we are a bit late and the casting song and all has to come in between but it's all right because this is a live thing so we don't have much time Rupa Pai is a uh, best known uh, writer right now for children and uh, she has written on nearly every topic possible like uh, she has started with sci-fi then uh, she has written books on economics then she has written books on teenagers handbook which is uh, i think it's based out on baden powell scouts and guides but the two books which has uh, really really uh, is is very intriguing is geeta and the other one is upanishad and vedas very difficult and we would uh, really talk about her entire journey from school girl to how she became uh, a well known writer a writer uh, par excellence so without any further ado uh, we call rupa into the studio hello hi hello. hi uh, uh welcome a very warm welcome uh to our two's live sessions and this is called magicians and we call magicians because uh, people who with their imagination with words or videos can create magic and uh in fact i have used that quote also by carl sagan in the poster that uh, human kind's biggest uh, gift is to write and uh, from there you can create magic so uh, people are more interested to know what and how has been your childhood like and from there to actually walking into the target's office so reading in at blightons yeah then getting that uh, lovely uh, book of target which was far more glitzier as compared to children's world your journey uh, sure main thoda hindi bhi use karunga ha sure sure i rupa will only respond in english <laughs> perfect hai, perfect hai. Uh, rupa ki kahani rupa ki zabani bachcho ki kahaniyan likhti hain shandar likhti hain और बड़ी कठिन किताबों को बड़ी आसान तरीके से लोगों के सामने लाई है खासकर गीता और उपनिषद टेड टॉक्स देखिए और गर्वित महसूस करेंगे कि हम भारतवर्ष से हैं हम जिन चीजों को जिन शब्दों को आज मजाक के तौर पे यूज करते हैं या उसको उतना तवज्जो नहीं देते हैं ब्राह्मण हो गया या सेज संत गॉडमेन हो गए ये ढोंग है और ये ढोंगी है लेकिन अगर हम एक्चुअली हमारे लिटरेचर को पढ़ें स्क्रिप्चर्स को पढ़ें और समझने की कोशिश करें तो बहुत बड़ा योगदान रहा है हमारा और उन चीजों को आसान तरीके से रूपा जी ने कहती हैं बच्चों के लिए लिखा हुआ है और लोग मानते भी हैं हमारे जैसे लोगों के लिए भी है गीता को हम रिलेट करते हैं कि उम्र हो गई भाई अभी कुछ करने को नहीं है तो गीता पढ़ते हैं जी नहीं इनका कहना यह है कि गीता इज ए हैंडबुक ऑफ लाइफ How, why? बताएंगी उपनिषद वेद उपनिषद गीता कैसे आया इन्होंने लिखा इसके उल्टे तरीके से <laughs> इन्होंने पहले गीता लिखा फिर उपनिषद और वेद पे काम किया और शायद ये डेस्टिन थी ये करने के लिए इनका ऐसा कोई प्लान नहीं था कि मैं ऐसे चालू करूंगी आ, कुछ लोग जुड़ चुके हैं आ, सिमी अरोड़ा हलो Uh, हमारे साथ नताशा राठौड़ जुड़ी हैं हाय नताशा uh, हमारे साथ ऋतु जुड़ी हैं हेलो एंड वेलकम डियर रूपा सो यू आर रियली यूर एंड दिस इज अगेन सेमी अरोरा वाओ फीलिंग प्राउड ऑफ यू वी ऑल फील प्राउड ऑफ ब्रिलियंट राइटर्स एंड हमारा बचपन किताबों से ही बना है आज शायद हम जो भी कहते हैं करते हैं सोचते हैं apart from whatever we have been taught by parents books play a very important role in our lives so over to you rupa about your story till target from target we will take it again and sure. the full thing is yours sure 
so hello good good evening i should say from where i am but uh, i think some of you may be watching from a different time zone so good morning uh, have a good day everyone and uh, welcome to this session and thank you all for being here and thank you to shubhratim for introducing me so nicely and uh, uh, thank you to ritu for having me and yeah let's get straight into my story uh well i was a product of the i grew up in the 70s and 80s so basically everything i say will be very relatable to anyone who grew up in india in the 70s and 80s in urban india so we were all and and the reading kids you know i was one of the reading kids for sure uh enjoyed visiting the circulating libraries in my neighborhood there used to be a lot of them in bangalore every neighborhood had one and of course the maximum number of shelves in any neighborhood circulating library were either filled with milson boon that is for the adults archie comics and then enid blyton so basically these were the three things that were readily available to us and luckily for us it was enid blyton who occupied those shelves uh and even more luckily for a voracious reader like me she wrote more than 700 books in her lifetime so there were never Uh, there was never a chance of running out of an Enid Blyton book to read. There was always something you hadn't read. You could swap with friends. You could read, and she was such a fabulous storyteller uh, that you know she really lit up my childhood. I have to say, uh, Enid Blyton lit up my childhood. She taught me how to tell a cracking story, how to use good dialogue, how to use humor uh, to bring action into every page. To keep it constantly interesting so it, every every book was a page turner and very importantly she taught me how to insert a moral lesson into the stories without being preachy at all i'm not i won't even be exaggerating if i say that much of my moral education came simply from reading in a blighton and it came unconsciously subconsciously without me realizing it so it it was all wonderful the other genre of books that i read obsessively as a child was amar chitra katha uh you know and i don't know how many time how much gratitude to show to anand pai i don't know how he came up with this masterful idea most kids of my generation we had we were just the beginning of the nuclear family generation people were moving out we were living away from grandmothers and we didn't have them to tell us stories and we would have been the lost generation if it wasn't for amarsta katha at least in terms of knowing our own mythological stories so a uh, great service but the thing was these two were wonderful and everything i mean i remember panel for panel various amarsta kathas because we read them over and over and every middle class indian home had these bound copies of amar sarakata <laughs> they were always bound it was a thing and we all did it and it was just, it was wonderful the only problem was in reading enid blyton so obsessively was that one grew up feeling that only british children had cool childhoods and my childhood somehow wasn't such fun because there were always so many adults around me so many adults and the british children in enid blyton books were always by themselves they were going off on adventures by themselves they were having picnics by themselves they were catching smugglers by themselves i don't know and they, they were just doing and they were having midnight feasts in boarding schools they were going away in the circus part of the circus there were never any parents in sight and in you know how an indian child's childhood is it was just surrounded by family all the time drowning in family any picnic that you went on was always with a bunch of grandmothers and aunts and uncles and cousins all stuffed into an ambassador car that was our picnics you know and so and amarsakata was about indian was was indian but it was about some past glory of india they didn't talk about kids like me so i didn't find a point of identification and there weren't very many indian authors writing for children at that time at all so i missed out that whole thing and i grew up feeling a bit like somehow as if i had missed out on childhood itself by not having a british kind of childhood by not being sent to boarding school and of course i grew up and much later when i saw it through the lens of history and perspective as an adult i realized that enid blyton wrote so much about children being on their own because she lived perhaps i think she has she lived through the second world war and in the young second world war london was in constant danger of being bombed so children were often sent away to the country to keep them safe no schools was possible no schools it was somehow like this covid pandemic time except that 
it was actually in danger of being bombed. So it must have been pretty traumatic for children to be sent away from their homes and their parents to live with some random relative that they had no clue who they were. And uh, they also had this constant tension that when they came back, their house may not exist anymore. It might have been bombed. Their dad might have got killed on the front. Their moms might have caught some terrible disease while they were helping with wounded soldiers. You know, it must have been very traumatic. So to romanticize the idea of countryside is fun, all these stories were written like, oh, but it's actually such fun to be without your parents. It's actually such fun to be at boarding school. And only then did I begin to appreciate what a wonderful childhood I had in fact had being surrounded by not just my parents but variety of nurturing adults who really cared about me and if we were having lemon rice and curd rice on our picnics that was because they're not and i had thought that was sucky food but actually it just meant that somebody cared enough to wake up early in the morning and cook that for me fresh and i didn't have to be eating ham and tongue out of tins you know so it was just a fresh new perspective but that happened in adulthood but what changed me while i was still a child was when I was about 13, like Shuprotim and I were speaking just before, you know, the, we came on live, that he had also read Children's World as a child, so had I. Children's World was the first kind of magazine that uh, talked about stories about Indian children, just like me. So that was a beginning. But what really blew my mind was this other magazine, a glossy product from the India Today's table. It was called Target Magazine. The first editor was a British woman, ironically. But she got Indian writers to write such beautiful stories about childhood. And I was like, oh my God, that, that sort of shifted the lens. And I said, they're talking about children like me, but these children seem to be having a lot of fun. So maybe my childhood is fun. I mean, I needed somebody to tell me that. Can you imagine? So while I had always known that I want to be a writer, my uh, ambition sort of crystallized a little more. I said, I want to be a writer for children. I want to write Indian stories for Indian children so that no other generation grows up feeling that they are somehow inferior to any other culture or their childhood is less. And so that they get a true appreciation of what they have, you know. And the third thing that I, that I was so focused on was that I wanted to grow up and write for Target magazine. This became a goal of my life. Can you imagine? I mean, I was about 13 or 14, but I knew I wanted to grow up and work for Target magazine. So it was a strange thought, but I never let it go. It continued to be in my head, even though I ended up doing a degree in engineering because as a South Indian middle class child, there are only two things that are open to you. You can either be a doctor or you can be an engineer, especially if you're sort of bright and academically you're doing well, no chance that you'll be allowed to do humanities or anything. And my mom was brought out the feminist card and said that I don't want any uh, girl child, any daughter of mine to be dependent on any man for her money and her livelihood so she should be able to earn her own money and therefore my both my daughters will do professional courses so when she brought that out i was like okay fine maybe that makes sense and also that's the only way to get her off my back so i finished my engineering i did that and then once i gave her my degree i said here it is you wanted it here it is now i'm going to go and do exactly what i want and the first thing i did was to go to delhi and apply for a job in target magazine and Target magazine had, you know, we had the corner of a corridor as our office, it's like really stepmotherly treatment to, for children's anything. And uh, there were only three editorial people. And Target was famous for never losing any of its staff. There was no turnover, zero. But the week before I entered that office for the first time, one of the three editorial staff had quit because she was married to an armed forces uh, person and she had otherwise not moved with him but this time she decided to move to him with him to his next posting so there was a vacancy and then of course i had to do whatever writing and you know take the interview and everything but i got the job i mean something that i had that had come in as a sankalpa in my head and i was 13 or 14 was fulfilled when i was 22 by an actual stroke of fate, it needn't have happened. So I, I didn't realize it then, but now looking back, and there are so many other things that happened, so which are related to Target. And now thinking back, I tell myself that it's not just a cliche. It is the truth that when you truly, truly want something and put in the hard work and determination that you need to achieve it, the universe will conspire to make it happen. So. I'll, I'll come in here. Uh, can, can I be a bit bigger on the screen? Uh, 
what she said right now is a famous shahrukh khan dialogue jab oh, dil se favorite actually <laughs> jab ko cheez aap dil se chahte ho to puri kainat aapke sath lag jati hai us cheez ke liye so uh, this has become famous with his dialogue but again that's actually the truth that's the maxim like when the passion for the purpose is understood thing starts happening because you start following that uh, i can so relate with everything that you have been telling like that uh, british children and unka uh, fooding and we had everybody had their own uh, regular khana roti sabji machli chawal uh, curd rice Achha, for me curd rice is very interesting for me lemon rice is very interesting because that was not made in my house yes, right yeah yes and the picnics the ambassador yeah. car the yeah. handles you had to start it if the batteries were down but yeah. that middle classness also had some class and that class actually came from all those books mm. if people used to tell us anything we used to give quotes we used to talk about books we used to talk about stories we used to talk about grandfathers maternal uncle has written this i think that was the kind of power we had but the strength of that was i think your imagination the dreaming power reading all those books and closing your eyes and dreaming were extensions of those stories yeah in my house and under the under the bed i had those caves where i used to go in my mother's sewing machine was my robinson crusoe's ship which i used to pedal then we had this mat what we call chatai we used to make like house a, under no, yeah and no, 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 no. we used to make house with that in the uh, below that's the table right. i also used to do that i had forgotten but yes that's true because it would be stiff and it would stand yeah, yeah. and 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 when a uh, few of the friends came in who had children we all used to come into the other room and every time there was a creatively new game that we did and if we look at it today it was inspired from one of the stories that we read yeah of course in it blight and absolutely yes was mandatory 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 yes then <laughs> came uh, other things uh, children's world was good actually technically it was very good the grammar yeah, it the was good it was very good yeah the only bad thing about it is was it did not look nice the paper nice. was old yeah. the print type was bad which is why target made a brilliant entry it knew yeah. its target it made a yeah. brilliant entry yeah and probably target found you you found your target and you hit the target <laughs> now uh today when you look at your life uh about say 30 30 35 uh, years of working do you really feel that it was the avocation uh, which was there within you with the parental pressures and all okay vocation taken care of but i will follow my avocation and following that avocation has made you a much happier a contented person it reflects on your life yeah absolutely i mean i'm i'm quite aware that i have i have some privilege in that in the sense that uh, i completely acknowledge that that perhaps it's not easy for everyone to follow their passion or avocation because there is the business of living to be dealt with and a livelihood and uh, i fortunately did not have to worry about that because i have this patron who's my husband <laughs> earlier writers and artists used to have the royal patron royal patronage and i have like spouse patronage like you know basically he's he's always been willing to fund my habit you know it's almost like a drug habit right so he's he's happy to fund it uh and therefore i was uh, able to follow this yeah but uh, no, but then after target also yeah. you have a very interesting story like you get married you travel the world and then also you keep writing so we yeah, come to yeah. that, no, we, no, come to that, that phase. we come that to is, that phase now that you you okay. reach delhi so you're younger mm -hmm. grew up in bangalore a uh, very beautiful actually beautiful stories of childhood uh, we call it middle class but that had so many stories a dadi story a dada story one one quote i would like to take from her which probably she will not uh, quote right now if 1 dollar was paid for the question 
that are you related to anant pai she would have made so much of money till now <laughs> but but if you look at the other way round look at what anant pai contributed to us as children and it's the name sake that another pai rupa pai mm -hmm. in today's world is contributing to children with the kind of books that they would like to read i have read her geeta a little bit and what i have appreciated is that she has made it cool she has mm -hmm. made it in today's language she has brought in the examples from today we will come to that because that i think is a very long discussion and i would give rupa a lot of time to explain that i need people to know and i want everybody to read that's my feel because hamare zamane mein hota tha na when you have something good you want everybody to taste share and know and then so that we can discuss together so to me your geeta right now is something like that i don't want it to be put as oh geeta after 65 why uh -huh. we'll come to that now yeah. your journey after you joined target your marriage and from there you travel across the world your right. food blogging and those writings there and yeah. how do you get a call and then again things start changing after a few number of books so that yeah. part of the story yeah and so, one more thing mm. so many variations how can you write here you write about sci fi then you write about scouts then you write about finance then you write about philosophy what was the base which gave you so much of depth and what kind of research yeah uh, 30% is god's gift given rest 70% yeah. that you need to tell there are lots of people who have joined in i'll take their highs after the second part of the story sure sure so um well so first about my journey so i i was a target for two and a half years when my husband got a chance to travel abroad to live abroad for a while so we went off to london now this was like dream come true you know somebody who grew up reading british books now you you can stay in london for a while my god for me moving to delhi from bangalore was more of a culture shock than moving from bangalore to london london seemed like i have come home i mean that much anglophilia <laughs> i mean it's embarrassing to talk about it now it's almost like politically incorrect to say but it it used to rule our minds britain somehow they have this uh, talent of making their colonies actually appreciate them and be in love with them <laughs> so anyway we went to london which was a beautiful year and a half year not year and a half just a year we were there but you know i didn't have kids then i didn't have a job so it was just i could have actually just spent my whole time just running just visiting places and seeing the city, seeing the country but that urge to write was so strong i would i would just not be able to spend more than a week or something not writing it was a it was a deep drive all the time to have to write something and uh, so one of the, i did many things there i did some travel writing i did a lot of writing for business today you know i i i used my position as a journalist in london as a writer in london to make contacts with a lot of magazines back home who otherwise may have treated me as a rookie but since i was already in london and i said hey i am already here and i can write for you uh, and i sent them i made sure to i mean this is just a really a uh, uh, little one on one for kids any kids who may be listening that you have to show the hunger then only somebody will appreciate it uh, you can't expect things to fall in your lap you have to do the work and it of course when you're doing when you're following a passion doesn't seem like work it, it's just something you do so i i figured out so many stories as read the newspapers obsessively spend a lot of time in british libraries and then there was a poll that came out saying that uh, yeah, chicken tikka masala has overtaken roast beef and yorkshire pudding as the number one favorite food of the britons for the very first time and i said my god there's a story here so i took that headline i wrote off to business today the editor for the very first time i said do you want me to do a story on the reverse colonization of britain through curry you know i can probably interview a lot of hoteliers restaurateurs uh, indian restaurateurs chefs and people who are making these ready made uh, indian curry masalas and things like that and i'll come up with a story for you but how this transformation happened who were the first people to come? and they said yes and i had like a cover story in business today just just like that because i was so antsy i did not want to sit down i had to do something all the time 
So, and once you get an in into one of the Indian magazines, then your resume just becomes stronger. You write to another Indian magazine, say, I write for business today. And Femina says, sure, write for us also. Then your cosmopolitan says, okay, write for me also. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a very curious person. I'm interested in a bunch of things, different things. So I was like, okay, let me do something on the food business. Let me do something. For Femina, the same story can be changed to write about a female entrepreneur who's doing curry masalas in the UK. People yes. I met during the course of researching one story led to so many other stories uh, in so many months. So I had a very productive one year in the UK while I was also having a lot of fun and, uh, you know, waking up late and sitting in the library for long hours. All that also I did. But I also managed to uh, get some work done. And so by the time I came back to India, people already knew. I mean, at least the editors of those magazines knew of me. So it was easy for me to then continue writing for them. And this other gig that I got onto, which was the best gig ever, is this travel writing gig. So I'd say I'll write about, you know, some British destination for Indian tourists to tell them about it. So I'd write for Indian travel magazines, which meant that British tourism would pick up my tab for the travel within Britain for the hotel stay. They would pick boutique hotels because they wanted me to write about those for Indian magazines. And I'm like, wow, this is wonderful. I, 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 get, I get paid. I get paid for the story separately. Plus, I get to travel. I get to see all these wonderful places. And British tourism takes care of me. I mean, it's just the world just expanded, you know. But but all this was still journalistic work. And my first love was still writing for children. And when I came back from the UK, uh, that was when I decided, we decided, okay, time to have kids. So then I didn't go back to full-time work at all. And sadly, sadly for me, by that time, Target had shut its doors. It had closed down. So there was no chance of going back and joining Target. So I continued doing whatever I could from home. I became a freelance journalist and I had my daughter. And so for a long time, I was at home. Then by the time my son came along, we moved to the US for some more time. <laughs> and within that, I had moved from Delhi to Bombay, like a lot of travel, a lot of moving around, which again expands your horizons quite a lot. You write for different magazines in each city. You know, different kinds. So in Bombay, I did a lot of Bollywood type stories, interviewed a lot of Bollywood hunks, all that. So that was also fun. So you just like every time you go somewhere, uh, I think basically it was curiosity. I'm just interested in a lot of things. And so that then then uh, then what happened was, uh, yeah, then finally from the US with both kids, I came back to India after 12 years away from Bangalore, moved back to Bangalore. And then the wonder, wondrous thing happened. That I mean, I, I, I did something here for three, four years, started my uh, with my husband, the Heritage Walks and Tours company called Bangalore Walks, because we had been so impressed by the walking tours in London. And we really wanted to strike out and do something on our own. And we felt really bad that, you know, these other countries, they celebrate their heritage so much. Uh, and, and we just don't do a good enough job of it. So we felt like, OK, Bangalore, I mean, really, Bangalore is not considered a historical city and it's a very young city compared to cities in India. But we said, I'm sure if we look around, if we root around, there'll be some interesting facts. And there were plenty. So we started off this Bangalore walk. So we did that for a while until kids were slightly older and I was still feeling this pull of I need to get back to writing. And when I was feeling I was writing for some children's magazines and all that. And suddenly I get a call from my very first editor in Target magazine, who I have been out of touch with for 10 years. Her name is Vatsala Kaul Banerjee. And she calls me and says, hey, I read one of your stories in one of these children's magazines last month. And I've just joined this publishing firm called Heshet, which has opened an India office. And we're looking for new authors to populate our book list. And that kind of story you wrote was exactly the tone I was looking for. Will you write for me? And so this book contract landed on my lap without me even going after it. And it was a contract for eight books. And I was like, excuse me, I haven't even written one book. How can you trust me to do eight books? But it helped that we had worked together and she had taught me all I knew about children's writing in Target. She said, no, I know you can do it. Just do it. And it has been her that has pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and made me take on all these challenges. So the first set of eight books that I then wrote was called Tara Knots. Uh, and it's a, it's India's first sci-fi fantasy adventure for children. And it got such such a warm in reception. English. In, huh? English. in English. In English. In English. In English. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of qualifiers. First uh, sci-fi fantasy adventure series for children in English in India. Yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, Shatrujit Ray and all had written so many things already. In, well, in exactly, one I was bringing that. Yeah, because yeah. I have read sci-fi of Satyajit Ray for yes, children. Yes, yes, Professor yes, Shankar. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So, so it was, um, yeah. So Taran, I mean, I don't know how I took on that project of writing eight books when I hadn't even written a single one, but it was so enjoyable. And I don't know. Do you want me to continue, Shripratim? Uh, what you asked me? What I, else? No, no. I will ask a question to this yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because because. Uh, if we look at Gita and if we look at sci-fi, sci-fi has got no foundations. There is no limits. You can create anything from anywhere and you can let your imagination run wild. For example, yeah. that uh, movie Interstellar, dreams under dreams under dreams under dreams. You can keep going here. Yeah? 200 dreams. And then you yeah. suddenly take them to some other place and you bring in a bird. Right? Yeah. As long as you can connect. So that's a different way. You don't have any foundation. And suddenly there is Gita. There is society. There is years of history. There is so much of philosophy. How much you can go out to extreme ends. So yeah. as of now, let us stay with the sci-fi. How did you conceptualize and how much did you let your imagination run wild? And while writing one of the stories, uh, did you ever come across like, Okay, here there is a chance of creating one more character that will be in the next book. Let me build a small story for it and, and keep thinking. And yeah. do you think a lot and then sit down to write or you start writing and the story keeps coming to you? Because there cannot be any process. To everybody, it is yeah. different. Yeah. So how do you do that? Like just an insight to that. Yeah. Because I yeah. am more uh, excited to know that. I don't know whether others are not. Because yeah. this is... Fantastic. Like you sit, you write. Uh, do you have the lamps on or you have uh, no lights or you need a lot of lights? Do you need to yeah. go out of your house? So how it is like uh, yeah. just the yeah. app. Yeah. Sure. So uh, sci-fi, uh, how did it happen? Well, you know, actually, so the thing I had said when I, uh, I said earlier in this interview that I was going to write Indian stories for Indian children. Hmm. So they would be as packed with action and adventure and fun as Enid Blyton stories, but they would not use Western tropes like gnomes and fairies and goblins. No, I said, we have such a fabulous treasure trove of our own bizarre creatures. So we hmm. shall delve into that. So even, even in that sense, it should be very Indian stories. So I was originally Tara Knots, I was planning to set it in India and have these three Indian kids travel to different worlds, sort of like that magic faraway tree kind of thing. That every time you travel to a different world and you prob these kids solve a problem in that world and bring back that learning to India and use it to change a real life problem in India to solve a real life. So, so that was the original thought. Uh, and the eight worlds, it's eight books because there are eight worlds in this uh, parallel universe, uh, fictional universe that I've created in which the whole thing is set. That was inspired by a 10th century temple, 11th century temple in Karnataka, when, I mean, as part of our heritage box, we used to take kids to these temples. And for the first time when I went to research, uh, we had taken a guide from the place and he was showing us this compass on the roof, on the ceiling of the temple. And he said the way people used to know which direction was which was because of the God of that direction. The Ashta Dikpalakas, there are eight Dikpalakas guardians of the eight directions. And by knowing which God is which, you know which direction. And I said, wow, that sounds so cool in English, right? Guardians of the eight directions. If you say Ashtadik Palakas, it's like, oh, intimidating. I don't know what you're talking about. But if you say guardians of the eight directions, it becomes very cool. So I said, okay. So I was already, Vatsala had already asked me to think about the series. So I said, oh, that'll be good. We'll have eight worlds that they go to because it has to be Indian, right? For me, it had to be Indian. And uh, then I was going to set it in India. But then my editor, Vatsala, she asked me a very pertinent question. She said, what will the children call their mothers? And I was like, what? So she said, no, see, it, if, if will they call their mothers mom, mommy, amma, ammi, ma, I? Oh, uh, we have got stuck. Uh, we will wait for her to come back uh, uh, in the meantime. Okay, it will get restricted to a certain geography by what they call their mothers. Okay, so do you want to do that? 
or do you want to just take it to a parallel universe? And so I created this parallel universe called Mithya. And uh, there is this, uh, <laughs> there is this huge ocean, endless, shimmering, shining ocean called Darya. And in Darya float these eight shimmery, sparkling worlds. And the sun of that 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 shines over the universe of Mithya is a super sun with 32 separate suns in it, and that is called Tara. And so there's a lot of Indian words, Indian language words mixed up in the language of Mithya, which is called Tara Tang. So, you know, and, and the children, the three protagonists who solve the mysteries and all that, the, there is one super villain, there is one superhero, but they are both twins and they have exactly the same capabilities. They have exactly the same intelligence. They have exactly the same courage. The only difference between the two of them is the choices they make. And that makes one of them good and the other one not so good. So it's when I started writing that, I realized how much my mind was informed by Indian thinking, Indian philosophy, which never has somebody as irredeemably, irredeemably good or irredeemably evil. Everybody is flawed. There are shades of gray. And that's what I wanted to bring to the children. And it came out like that. It came out very well and it was very appreciated. You know, it was a very nice series. And so, yes, so that's what Tara Knots was about. And it happened over four years. Every six months, a new book in the series would come out. And yes, of course, the thing was on the back cover, back inside cover of each book, the next book's cover would be already published. So not only did I have to finish writing the first book, I would have to think what happens in the second book. And so that's how it developed. So, And my writing process, what you asked, is uh, no, I don't. I mean, no, no, I not, not the process, not the process. Like, ah. is there an ambience? Is there a favorite pen? Yeah. Is there a keyboard? Yeah, that's right. is, there, is there something? So these are the covers of the Tara Knots. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, Hashtag did such a good job with the covers and the illustrations. It was yeah, so well produced for an Indian. That. Yeah, so attractive. And it, it had foil, it was shining, it had embossing. In the Indian children's market, there weren't that many books of that quality at that time, cover-wise. You know, so And Priya Kurian, the illustrator, she did such a marvelous job of bringing these characters to life. And all these strange monsters, and you know, you know that 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 fish that you can see, that electric eel kind of thing. It's called a bijli march. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the scary bijli march. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it was but, a full, yeah, of, but... yeah, full of words like that. So it was fun. What do I have in my? This is my desk actually, where I write. This is my old desktop, which I love so much. So I have not got rid of it. But now I'm talking to you on my laptop. Actually, only only when COVID started and the lockdown started, did I get a laptop because this Zoom session thing became a necessity and my desktop doesn't have a webcam, doesn't have a built-in camera. Therefore, otherwise I had not. So this is my part of my writing scene. I do not own a laptop. I have never written anything on a laptop. It's always on the desktop. And I love the discipline that writing on a desktop brings in because it means when I'm in this room, I am writing. I'm not saying I'll go to a cafe and sit and I'll write there. Yeah. So, so, so for me, discipline, ambient. discipline is very, very, I think, crucial for a writer or any artist. You know, artists and writers may say, hey, I'll wait for the muse to visit and I'll wait for inspiration and all, which is all very well. Maybe it works like that for some people. But for me, it is very much sit in front of that desktop. Come what may. When the children are at school, 9 to 4, 9 to 3, they're away. That's all the time you have, my friend. If you don't get any writing done in that time, this day is lost. So that kind of pressure makes you, oh my God, if I don't write now. So that is the best pressure for me. And I usually have liters of chai during that, that period. I probably don't eat a meal at all from 9 to 3. But I'll be drinking lots no, of chai. From Bangalore, are a chai person, not a coffee person? God, God. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, no, a, I'm a traitor. No, no, it's not like that. Like There are a lot of guys in Kolkata who are uh, coffee people and they are not coffee chai. <laughs> so, so 
so it's 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 personal choice but again it comes yeah. I'll take in a uh, few people who have uh, just uh, come in. Yeah. So I've come in for a lot of time. Simi Arora, wow, uh, really proud of you. I think I had taken that. Yeah, uh, taken that, yeah. Editor, he says, hi, Supi. Uh, Ritu says, me too. This is about, uh, you are just narrating my story. Same books I read too. Yeah. 80s read it, yeah. 80s had yeah. ambassadors for Piats. Yeah, right, yeah, and it is knew all the ads, they knew all yeah. the similar serials which we used to watch, yeah. nearly yes, the same. because there was only one Durdarshan. So, we yeah, yeah. Simi Arora, I have heaps of books on homeopathy. My father was a homeopathy doctor, but I did MA in music, can't understand what to do with those books. That's a long discussion, we'll have it later. Ah, uh, we were we were so much in awe with the settings and everything in. Edit Brighton, absolutely. It has given us immense pleasure. It has given us how to dream, like that London story which she says, or the England story. Uh, I, I know because we knew what are the kind of buzzes there, what are the kind of roads, because we're yeah. so much into England, or, or rather, England was so much into us. Yeah. Very good statement which you said that they made colonies edify their country and accept it so much that it looks like their own country. Yeah. Sure. Yes, absolutely love your TED Talks, ma'am. Yeah, Thank they are you. brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Being a millennium, he said something like millennium and all. Be millennium. Way, being a millennial, it is so beautiful when you talk about your childhood. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but we are not that ancient also. <laughs> ha -ha, we are as fresh and as good as you. Uh, Emmett Blyton's famous five, I think, is mandatory for every child. Yes, it is. But you guys have got a lot of offers now. Uh, Niharika Rawat, highly talented, skilled, and intelligent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Kaladar Kala Warungati, in this age of tweets and TikTok, how to motivate kids to read? Okay. Uh, Kaladar is from uh, Los Angeles, the place where you were from, from the Silicon Valley. Uh, Sir Siege Go, show us the stones you are wearing in your fingers later on. Call uh, Raji, great artist, respect. Uh, Thank Simi, you. Again. Yes, well said, artists have same nature, dear. Okay, so in fact, uh, I think people have started responding because I was not taking them much in because today we have a storyteller. And when you have storytellers, we just have to utilize the entire time to listen <laughs> to the story and take a commitment for her to come back again. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Because this I have learned from my nannies and dadis. I used to eat fast where I used to take promise that Jack and the Beanstalk, you will not uh, stop in the middle, right? You will tell yeah. me the entire story. Because yeah. that was my bribe to eat <laughs> faster. Brilliant yeah. Yeah. childhood. So I think Kaladhar's question is, is good in this age of tweets and TikTok, how to uh, motivate kids to read, I think uh, a fascinating story, which probably like OTT channels stops at a particular point and makes you go back to that story time and again. We have to create that kind of a space like you did with your series of Tara Knots. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. am so interested with the description that I would like to finish it yeah. this weekend, and I will do that. <laughs> I'll tell you what I liked about it. Because Professor Shanku had so much effect. In he created a small globe. He had life there. It is nothing but aquascaping. Like, yeah. like you did. But so brilliantly explained. Now, yeah. uh, see, sci-fi was brilliant. Okay. So what I gather, engineering had its effect on Arupa. That she is a very uh, disciplined sincere and one place where she sits and she writes which means her mind is so fertile that whatever be the situation she just concentrates and the stories keep coming out so from here the shift to the different subjects hmm. How? yeah yeah so the other thing i wanted to add now when you're summarizing my writing what uh, i mean you know sitting at one place the other thing i always require when i write is a very basic structure to the story. I don't, I don't think of the story in advance. Okay, but in Tara Knots, for instance, each book has four puzzles to be cracked by the Tara Knots if they have to save the stars. Something there is a big story at the back. But 
once I got that structure in, that there are four puzzles per book, it helped me then to write in a very structured manner because I'd say, no, it's time for the first puzzle. So many words are over. So you're then forced to finish, bring the story to the point where a puzzle is presented. So that kind of basic structure I have, but otherwise it's very free flowing. Like I just start writing, I plunge in and start writing because you know, the characters end up doing stuff that I never intended them to do. They take over the story. They write, they write themselves. And this is a process that many writers talk about, but it's difficult to explain how it happens. It just, anyway, that is one. Then the characters speak to you, right? They, yeah, they speak. They do. They do. They I will do. not do that. I, I will not yeah, go. Yeah. I will not do yeah, I will yeah, yeah, yeah. That would not be right for me to do. So I'm like, you know, that does, it's not consistent with my personality. So, so that kind of thing. It's very lovely, actually. Anyway, so I had, it had taken me four years to write these eight books and each book had four puzzles, which I created. They could, they were number puzzles, logic puzzles, like, you know, moral kind of puzzles, dilemmas. So by the end of it, I felt very fictioned out after four years, I'm like, I cannot write fiction anymore right now. You know, I cannot come up with any more creative ideas. So I went back to my training of, in engineering and I said, I'll do nonfiction. And I wrote a book called, what if the earth stops, stopped spinning and 24 other mysteries of science. Okay. So I just took like 25 mysteries. Uh, and I said, let me explain the real physics and the real chemistry behind these for children in a very conversational format. And I think my, that that gave my mom such kicks. She said, see, see, you come back to science only in the end. Like, you know, you may want to be a writer, but now you come back to science. But I must say that I think that sticking with science and maths for four more years through engineering helped to wire my mind in a certain way. Like you said, you know, that engineering kind of analytical mindset, it really helped even in the writing of my books. Anyway, so uh, you see, even in that science book now, there were 25, I decided on the number 25 before I started. So that gives me structure. If I say 1,500 words per question, and then I begin to write, I know it's going to be whatever, a 35,000 book, a word book before I begin, and then I start writing. And then it, then I do like, maybe one question every three days. And it becomes very quickly, I finish seven, 25 questions in 75 days. So two and a half months, your book is done. So it's a very uh, structured way of doing it. And I must say that when I wrote these, this book, for the very first time, I understood science concepts that I should have understood in high school. I never understood, I used to do very well. I used to get maximum marks, but I hadn't had a deep understanding of what it was until I wrote this book. And that's when it struck me that writing a book for children is the best way to understand a subject well, because you have to understand it so well to be able to simplify it in a way that children can understand. So that science book happened. Then one I was, example. One example. Uh, let me see. What you uh, didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I can. I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll just take out the book. This is right behind. So this is the book actually. Beautiful. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, huh. So think like, why is it that my throat infection goes away when I take antibiotics, but my cold doesn't? So the difference between bacterial infections and viral infections which now suddenly in the pandemic time is so relevant. So important. So, yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't used to know why, like, why, why can't we take antibiotics for a cold? And it's a bacteria, virus, they're two different things, you know, things like that. But biology, I used to still understand in school, but physics and chemistry were my real bugbears. I didn't use, but then I, I like things like this. A coin, so this is one of the mysteries, a coin falling falling on your head from the 100th floor of the Burj Khalifa can kill you. Is that true or false? It's a myth. Yeah. So yeah. why is it a myth? Momentum, force of gravity, you know, gravity, all, all those physics concepts, I finally understood how it works. So anyway, I finished the physics, the science book and I was again at a loose end and wondering what to do when my editor, sorry, uh, Vatsala, she said, hey, I have the best idea for you. I know exactly what you should write. 
next and i said great tell me because i'm itching to write something but i have no ideas and she said why don't you write the bhagavad gita for children <laughs> i'm like are you kidding me why would i write the bhagavad gita i am an interesting writer i am an entertaining writer why would i torture children you know why would i write that no child would ever want to read and which is not even meant for children anyway we'll come to that gita story later in more detail but so i i explored but she persisted for 6 months and i ended up writing this book and then i began to realize that you know there are so many different fields to be explored there are enough that just nowadays especially there are a lot of indian children's authors writing good fiction but once mm. again non fiction was the lacuna was missing so i said maybe i can do that because i really enjoy again it's my analytical mind or scientific i love research i love to research things as much as i write i like writing creative stories i also like to research and then present some subject in a simple way so after the geeta came out and it did very well uh you know then after that i was like yeah so <laughs> but I, i was like Uh, so my editor was like okay good now you can write the vedas and upanishads or or the puranas or something and i'm like please i will not be bracketed i will not be thought of as a writer who writes on those kinds of topics you know this was me and i was like no i'm interested in a great many things i want to write about that and she was so wise she said okay do whatever you like and then you come back i know you'll come back to <laughs> and then i went off and wrote this book on economics because what the geeta did was it gave me the courage to get into subjects that i had no knowledge about with the confidence that if i only was humble and open minded and said speak to me to a subject it probably would if i went in without any preconceived notions and my own you know mental barriers it would speak to me and economics was one subject i had never studied and i always felt really stupid that there's an entire newspaper dedicated to many newspapers dedicated to the business news and financial news and i would not understand any of it it felt like a bit of a doofus for not knowing things like do gdp and stock markets I, i just did not understand them so i said this is a good chance to do it uh because again if you're to write it for children you have to really understand it and that book i didn't expect it to be a hit but it became very popular after writing that book did you start investing in sebi and other places <laughs> no no <laughs> no sadly no i didn't again i took that whole macro picture of economics you know uh, about uh, how it actually leverages the essential selfishness of human beings to do good for the world you know, how economists yeah you know so that the goldman sachs and all of them the big big uh, names for which we all study iits and iims and eventually going there and uh, there is a sad part of that also there is a good part of that also i'll get a lot of backlash here if i if i say only the sad part good part also but economics is something which is very difficult to understand and like you go to iits you do your computer engineering then you go to iim and you do your financial management and then you go and work as a uh, financial consultant or hedge funds and things like that Manager, lots of things yeah. managers hmm. why did you do computer engineering like you were supposed to right so a lot of things need to be sorted there so need to understand that also by the way what is your stream in engineering computers oh, computer science yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> computer engineering it was a, a very new of, and fresh field that time so <laughs> a lot of pascal and lot of uh, seven layer networking by tannenbaum and all they're all a part of engineering courses then yeah But, yeah, uh, yeah. actually what you said is right it wires your brain it programs your brain in a certain way where if you are even uh, creative that creativity also has got a structure which helps actually yes. it helps yes else you That's right. a lot of time right. you, have got, you have got only that much time where you, yeah. and it helps you in focusing which is good yeah. so yeah. Uh, we have loads of engineers who are doing everything but engineering but engineering so, yes Yes, particularly in Bangalore, <laughs> I must add. Everywhere, everywhere you go to, you go to Bollywood, you will see half the people. Say, I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm an electrical engineer, I'm a civil engineer, but I'm a director today. Yeah, It's basically yeah. uh, the the kind of peer pressure which was there. So we had to do that and tell them, okay, here is the degree that you need. Can I do what I want to? So even that uh, TVF, T 
PBF guys. Yeah. They're all the engineers. And look yeah. what the one question I'd like to ask, like all these books that you have written, uh, any offers from televisions or serials or OTTs to make films on them? Or the negotiations are still on, or it's with the publication to make those deals. No, there were. Right. There was a very strong offer for uh, Taranauts actually, uh, but then the studio ran into some financial problems and uh, it fell through. But uh, yeah, Taranauts, I would love to see it being made into something because that's the only fiction uh, that I have written. So yeah, otherwise the others are non-fiction, so I haven't got any other. Yeah. Don't and yes, that. then after that, after the economic book was the, was the life skills book for teenagers, that handbook that you talked about. It's called Ready. Ready, huh. 99 must have skills for the world conquering teenager and almost teenager. That is, as you said, it was inspired by Baden Powell's movement, Scouts and Guides. I used to be a girl guide and I really feel it's a pity that the Scouts and Guides have sort of disappeared from our mainstream schools. It was such a great... Yeah, great life skills uh, thing oh, it was. Is, ah, okay. Yeah, you found this picture and Rahul, yeah, Rahul Dravid actually endorsed this book and he said it's a great book and he bought it for his sons. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bangalore after, is the like you said. After that, I finally and I wrote on Krishna Devaraya another book. Then after these three books. I'm finally okay, but this this Vedas and Upanishads were calling out to me that that landscape had seduced me after I'd written the Gita, and you know I really wanted to. I knew that the Gita was the distillation of the wisdom of the Upanishads, which are sprawling texts. But Veda Vyasa took care of them and just distilled them into just 700 verses of the Bhagavad Gita. And as a writer, as a fellow writer, I mean Veda Vyasa was also a writer. As a fellow writer, I was really keen to understand what was the original text from which he took this. What did he choose to leave out? How did he condense it? So I would never know that process that must have gone on in his head if I didn't explore all the Upanishads as well. And uh, that is what uh, finally I went back to Vatsla. And I, I mean, the book Ready also I wrote for Heshet. But which she allowed me to do in between this and that. Then after that, I said, please, please, can I write? Can I come back and do Vedas? And she's like, yes, please come. We have been waiting. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful. The, the, I mean, this writing the Gita and writing the Vedas and Upanishads, all my books, but particularly these two have been very transformative. OK, now uh, uh, I would like to ask the back team, is our song ready? Uh, I would like to run the uh, casting song now. And again, there is a reason. Once that uh, song uh, goes through, I will tell you what the reason is. And again, I have learnt it from Rupa only. So we will discuss that. So we are entering the Gita zone. I am also very time bound this time because she's told me that this is the time frame. I'll try to be in that time frame. Can we have that, please?
this was supposed to be the casting but it got stuck yeah. uh, so i said okay i will hold on to the geeta talks now why because uh, rupa writes in the book geeta that whenever you start reading geeta you have to do a set of verses where we actually offer our prayers to mahabharat vyas krishna arjun everybody and then we start uh, good habit probably it brings in the focus or whichever way you want to look at it so i said if that be the thing let's make this shloka as the casting and since we will be talking about geeta so it will be done so we will have no pap we will all be punyawala <laughs> so good so somehow it played uh, a twan but then it very worked nice. very nice very nice yeah uh, ritu has a message i'll just read that uh, in what a fantastic simplistic style you wrote geeta must have been very challenging it's awesome it connects with homework handwork harry potter etc it's amazing it connects with everything because actually geeta if if we all have read at some point of time or other krishna tells is everything yeah he is karma yeah. he is dharma he is brahmanda so the questions that uh, arjun puts up is is probably your question my question his question her question and the answers which come they are guidances at every age why we do not like geeta because we generally because it's so thick so boring so so difficult boring i'm sorry but it is uh, it was not anymore uh, after 65 that we have got nothing else to do there so we read that which is why we related to that we read what she has written she has everybody rodiard keep playing to 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 i i don't remember all the names but she has brought in brilliant anecdotes that atom bomb the time bomb the story the theory of uh matter changes that is theory of uh, energy energy is never destroyed nor uh, conservation of matter and conservation yeah. of mass and energy i am a fine student still theek hai yaar koi cheez nahi badalta hai malum hai na aa se atman aata hai and amazing i have the book i can read a few things but i'll not i'll let her say that how geeta happened to her and what was her process maybe your engineering helped a lot in creating the map and i would like uh, one point which i personally like where you explain the sena the numbers so geeta over to you and now your full screen i'll go out of this also <laughs> no 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 it's okay yeah so like i said my editor she first proposed it so i i call her my krishna she directed my chariot to this particular battlefield and said you know i think you should write the geeta for children and i was like as i said you know horrified i said i haven't even read the text in its entirety ever in my life i know people who have spent years being completely immersed in it who totally understand it and even at, after all those years they speak about it so beautifully etc but they still say we are still peeling the layers and how does it give me the credibility when the geeta is like this this kind of text what credibility do i have uh, not just i am i may not even have the bandwidth or the brain uh, to understand the philosophical uh, difference uh, the, the philosophical ramifications of the text and now you want me to interpret it and write it for children i mean i think that's a huge responsibility and i don't want to take it up but for some reason vatsala just kept at me and kept at me for 6 months i mean i tried my best to shake her off she would not be shaken off and then finally she said okay listen this is the last time i'm going to say this but i want you to actually give it a best give it your best shot don't just say i can't do it i can't do it go and try take a take the original find the original bhagavad gita from somewhere find someone who can tell you which are the best commentaries on it sit down spend one month being totally immersed in it and at the end of it if you tell me that if this is not a book for children or this is not a book i can write i don't understand it at all or whatever you know whatever problem you have with it if you tell me after having given it your best shot that you can't do it for whatever reason i will promise to let you go so i went over to an aunt in law of mine who was very well versed in the gita and who had taught at chinmaya bal bharti and stuff so i mean she even knew how to talk about it to children so i went to her and she's a teacher she's been a lifelong teacher so she you know took out a 
a chart paper she drew a mind map for me you know in the typical way of teachers this is what happened in the first chapter this is what happened second i mean she just she said you know this is just a first meeting i'm giving you an overview and then we will meet again over several weeks and i'll tell you more and maybe you will have the courage to write it then but in that very first meeting she said and you do know that krishna and arjun are best friends right and i hadn't actually known that i knew that they were you know for me geeta upadesha was always with krishna standing like this and arjuna sitting like this so i had always thought of them as mentor mentee or guru shishya or, or something or god and human or something but i had never thought of them as best friends and when she told me that something clicked in my head as a children's writer i said so basically the geeta is a conversation between two best friends and which happens just before a great war maybe surely i can write that for children i mean if it's a conversation between two best friends that's already making it approachable you know and i said that sort of dissolved the first barrier and then she gave me her favorite commentaries and she said we'll talk again in a couple of weeks or in a week whenever you know and then i took it away home and began to read and at the end of a month when my editor called batsla called and she said so do you think you can do it what what are you saying she was so with full of trepidation and hesitation she asked me and i had turned 180 degrees by then she was stunned. i said like oh my god i mean i hadn't even found the time or the inclination to call her so absorbed was i in the book and i said that what do you mean of course i'm going to write it i mean it's clearly one of the greatest books in the world it's nothing there's nothing religious about it i see it as the oldest self help book in the world and every child would benefit so much from reading it there are so many takeaways i would love to write it and she must have you know done a see i knew it but she said oh really okay she was she stayed very calm <laughs> and because i think she was also she knew she was taking on a big challenge as well putting out this book because really at that time when we looked at the market there were some geetas for children but they were mostly brought out by religious organizations and not by regular publishers you know so it was a it was a big one for her as well so and she was no expert on it either so we worked as such a good team you know i would write each chapter and send it to her usually you write a bunch of chapters and then send it to your editor or perhaps even finish the manuscript but this chapter by chapter we went back and forth back and forth because both of us were conscious that we were dealing with a very sacred text and yeah. unlike yeah. rick riordan or somebody like that and this american writer who writes about greek mythology and puts mount olympus on top of the empire state building in the 21st century i mean great books but he can do that because the greek gods are not worshiped anymore they are not relevant anymore but in our country the gita is a living breathing text highly revered highly beloved so you can't take liberties with it so we had to, i had to be I had to think about what kind of language i want it to be child friendly but i don't want it to be irreverent you know it has to and and that's why then i ended up choosing as you must have seen shubhratim i chose uh, two styles of writing so yes. when i'm narrating the actual story uh, i use a classical kind of english so that children never lose sight of the fact that this is an old old text and then there are these lessons from the bhagavad gita interleaves between the chapters where i use a more conversational tone where i talk about what lessons the children can that is my usual style of writing for children very conversational so i alternated the two and uh, yeah i and the the one thing that i did differently i think from most of the other uh, bhagavad gita uh, versions that are in the that are generally available is that i did not go shloka by shloka yes. that's what yes. most do and then usually what happens by the fifth or sixth shloka i have lost the thread of the yes. story you know and i'm yes. like okay i want to this shloka but what is its connection to what went before so what i did was i storyfied the bhagavad gita i made it like a story and uh, so i put in my own thoughts here and there about what arjuna must have been thinking at that time and you know the the emotions the smiles all that was my own imagination i imagined if they were talking about things like this he must this is the thought that must have gone through arjuna's mind so it became like a story and i was very very conscious that i should not dilute it or make it somehow superficial in any sense even if it's just because i'm writing it for children does not mean it should be dumbed down 
in any sense. Children are amazingly able to appreciate very high, uh, very difficult philosophy and thoughts. I think we don't give them enough credit. If it's explained to them in an accessible way, they will teach you stuff. That is why we have, uh, you know, sayings like out of the mouths of babes, words of wisdom flow. It is because they see it with much more clarity than we do. So we cannot insult their intelligence. We should not by talking down to them or saying it in some very simple language. They, they do understand if it is explained to them by treating them with as much respect as you would give any other adult reader. So I think those are what I brought into it. And for me, it was very transformative on many levels. And when it finally was released, I was still very, very fearful. I was very nervous about what the reception would be. Uh, my publishers and I had got it vetted by scholars and they had said it was fine. But, you know, the Gita is very personal to people. Just because a scholar says it's fine, the feel might not, you know, people may feel offended by how it has been treated. It's a very personal thing and nobody can be blamed for feeling the way they do, especially in matters of faith. Th that is, everybody has a right to feel what they do. Uh, but luckily, I mean, it's been received with so much love. I, I am just, I just feel blessed and humbled all the time by the kind of reception it has received. And I have no idea why the universe picked me to do this, but I'm very grateful. <laughs> Noble soul. And uh, as, as you have written in Gita or you have read and then rewritten it in a simplistic manner, uh, you must have learned that every every everything that comes to you, you have to do with all your might, all your dignity, all your truth and expect nothing. And uh, here also you are probably uh, expecting nothing, least of all criticism. But then again, the respect that, yes, yeah. this is a difficult subject. And it is actually a challenge to take up such a difficult subject. Because uh, before doing the show with you, I have been talking to a lot of people that uh, I'm going to interview Rupa and it's all about, uh, she has written Gita for Children. Gita for Children? Oh, there have been so many people, you don't understand Gita and that too for children. I said, you must read. I'm also reading. And you would see that the kind of simplicity and the relevance that she has brought in. A word like cool. Is there in a book like Gita? But then again, it is away from the scriptures. A headline yeah. is there. Your takeaways. What yeah. is it that you have learned and how is it relevant? Because that yeah. is where the connectivity is. It is brilliantly done. In fact, it should be said, uh, I think, uh, okay, uh, I would request every one of you because we are short on time, but I will take her on again in due course of time. You want to know more about the writings and things like that. There is a very good talk show which uh, uh, Rupa has done with Usha Uthuk's daughter. Uh, it is there in the net. It is it is uh, India Diaries Part 1, I think. That is what she has started. It is brilliantly done. Very nice. And I would like to congratulate their entire team. Good job. We need to bring in these narratives as much as possible. Because every channel has its limited... Uh, audience we cannot reach out to the world so as many people can talk about this this is very important so god was kind the universe the brahmand was kind that people received it positively which means well done brilliantly done the right person was chosen to do that one word i'll uh, take from that interview that it should have been named i like that it should have been named Gita for Dummies. Uh, <laughs> coming from the computer background, we all read a lot of books for dummies. So again, it's not an insult. It's it's a way that book is placed, like do that so you'll get the basics and you'll go ahead. Again, I would say uh, add a word called Gita for dummies who will become an expert. Something like that. Not only dummies. It's beautifully done. And it gives you the easy insight to again go back to the Gita, which maybe you have not understood to read it again. Well said, yes, yes. because you, by the time you come to the 18th shlok, you forget the 12th or the 4th shlok and yes. you forget the connectivity. Once mm -hmm. that entire picture is clear in your mind that what is the story all about? Where are we reaching? Then probably our concentration level goes up higher. 
like a b c d a for apple b for boy then suddenly s is equal to ut plus half at square so with s is equal to ut plus half at square we understand a b c d well so that's that's the connectivity and one more thing which i liked in that was the way you have calculated the sena and the veers those are the additional things which help you understand and dosto 10 avatar to hain ye hum sab padhe hain comics mein 24 avatars bhi hain wo kahan se aati kaise aati aap khud research kar sakte ho aur geeta ke andar bhi padhoge to bahut maza aayega bahuton ko ye pata hai ki 10 avatar human evolution ke sath bhi relate kiya ja sakta hai और दश अवतार को दश अवतार की तरह से भी देखा जा सकता है हमको कल की का इंतजार है लेकिन नौवे अवतार के बीच में चौबीस अवतार और हैं ये कहानी भी है और मजे की बात यह है कि गीता में जो भी आया है वो उसके भी पहले ज्ञान के रूप में अवेलेबल था हमारे संत हमारे पढ़े लिखे जो उस समय के इवॉल्व लोग थे उन्होंने खूबसूरत तरीके से लिखा था बहुत गहन अध्ययन के साथ लिखा था कोई मेमोरी नहीं था कोई 32 टू बेट वन टी बी थ्री टी बी नहीं था द ओनली मेमोरी वॉज दिस सो इट केव कीप कीप इट केप्ट फ्लोइंग थ्रू द जनरेशन विच इज वॉट अगेन शी इज डिफाइंड एंड शी गोज बैक टू वेदास एंड उपनिषद दैट ऑल्सो इज अ मस्ट रीड अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट दैट हाउ यू वेंट बैक एंड डिड दैट आफ्टर डूइंग गीता इट वॉज अगेन अ रिवर्स इंजीनियरिंग बट अगेन एज लॉन्ग एज दे आर अवेलेबल इट मेक्स ईजी रीड सो ओवर टू यू अगेन Yeah. So the Gita is uh, okay. I was just reading. Yeah, yeah, I was also reading. It's a good one. <laughs> so I would yeah. like to do the Gita to some schools or underprivileged kids. Can you go guide me how to do it? Very, sure. very. Sure. I will uh, send you some info, Ritu, separately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the Vedas and Upanishads. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I really wanted to go and explore that landscape, but I knew even less. about the vedas and upanishads than i had known about the gita at least the gita through amatra katha i knew something about it vedas and upanishads apart from the names of the four vedas i didn't know very much but there was a four year gap between the gita coming out and the vedas and upanishads coming out three and a half years and i spent a lot of that time just researching it you know by the way thinking that one day i will write it because i was also doing these other books in the middle and uh, yeah they just became very fascinating but one crucial difference i noticed while i was researching for the gita and researching for the vedas was that however many books i had read about the vedas and upanishads i wasn't able to get a grasp on it until i started listening to discourses for some reason for the upanishads to be for me to understand it needed some swami or guru or a thinker to talk about them to me i don't know why i just feel maybe that oral transmission thing was important that when you write it takes away some of the essence of it or or i don't know what but it i really help my understanding when i listen to some good people great thinkers talk about the upanishads and uh, all the books also help uh, shri m's books on the upanishads really help and this uh, there's a swami ji called swami sarvapriyananda in new york actually uh, he's the resident uh, swami of the uh, vedanta society of new york okay. what a brilliant thinker from the ramkrishna mission he is he's just amazing and his his uh, discourses and really helped me understand i mean sort of get some kind of grip on it so that i would be able to write it uh, yeah much more difficult to understand and the, uh, the gita is a beautiful text it appeals to everybody immediately the upanishads require a little more you have to stay with them for a bit you have to let them grow on you the gita is very easy to access at least for me it seemed like in that sense it goes straight to the heart of things there is no beating around the bush it goes to, and and why where the upanishads are the theory class the gita is the practical practical class it actually takes all that theory and puts it in a battlefield and now it's very all very well to sit in a ivory tower and talk about all these things you know but when you actually have to apply it it becomes such a companion for real life the gita because it tells you yes you real life is like this it's a battlefield it's not like you're sitting in a forest and talking about these beautiful ideas you actually have to execute them you have to apply them 
in real life and that is much much harder my friend <laughs> like you know so uh so it's a beautiful coming together actually it takes you through and i i was just fascinated by the ancient indians really i mean the kind of explorations they made into the nature of the mind of the self uh and the upanishads are full of those what is the mind really who are you really what happens after death really so some of our basic ideas and world views are first expressed there and you will find that the the very very smart wise people after that like in, including uh, vedavyasa himself he said okay these upanishads are there but who will ever read this sprawling texts and they're also very mystical and not easy to access the truths in them although they use a lot of stories to tell the to bring their points to thing but they're still a little difficult and he must have said listen i want this to be the secret of the ages it has to go down generation after generation so i need to make it compact and even that even just 700 verses if i publish it as a slim volume nobody is going to read it i have to put it bang in the middle of some fascinating saga in which there are so many charismatic characters that people are already seduced by them you bring them to the brink of the great battle that is the crux of the book and just before the battle starts put in this geeta so it becomes yeah, like a commercial break and if you want to know what happens afterwards you have to recite this you have to learn it and and it's remember there were no books so it you, you had to listen so you can't flip that page and say no i'll read this later i'll go to what happened in the battle you had to listen to the philosophy before you went uh to the rest of it so i think that was a brilliant move but even that they felt was not enough even the geeta may not be accessed so how do we make sure these wisdoms go down to every indian every person so if you look at the puranas the yeah. itihasas itihasas of the mahabharata and the ramayan the puranas are other ways of telling stories which have the same moral underpinning the same wisdoms are passed down over okay you are not a kind of reader fine leave it why don't we we will put it in dance in bharatanatyam also we will tell the same stories in odyssey also we will tell the same stories okay you're not a dancer fine put it in music classical music hindustani music carnatic music the same stories okay you don't want to listen to music let's put it in temple architecture it's the same stories again and again and again so that you always get the wisdom and therefore i find in indians we they may not even have heard of these texts but the wisdoms are very deeply in our dna we all understand what is karma you do something bad it will come back and bite you and that's the only thing to be really worried about is that and and even though we say that everything is written here etc we are not a fatalistic society we understand very well that just by sitting around nothing is going to happen you have to put in your very best effort but if things don't come out as you hoped then you can always blame your you know but it won't Uh, and you can always pass the buck and you can say something my forefather did now i have to carry the burden of that karma and you can be free guilt free uh, you know <laughs> you say i can't help it so is that such a wonderful liberating way of living and what the upanishads tell us is are that you know the um you are limitless no don't ever think and this is a great lesson to send out to young people today who who are so unsure about what their place is they get so depressed they are so they feel so insignificant they feel so irrelevant they feel so powerless but you know if you spoke if you read the upanishads they would tell you that you have just not accessed your true potential and there is, don't believe that don't ever think that you're limited in any way you are actually aham brahmasmi you are god himself i mean can there be anything more blasphemous than that or more liberating than that or more terrifying than that you are god you can you can be so spend your life trying to access that divine potential in you it's not even god it's the divine potential that divine energy and you can be whoever you want to be and you can achieve whatever you want to achieve so that kind of very empowering messages which are so needed in the 21st century and through all time really i mean okay. as humans we are so used to thinking of ourselves as small beings who are powerless to make a difference but if you start thinking of yourself as a limitless god 
I mean, that you have more compassion than you believe possible. You have more strength than you believe possible. You have more courage. You actually have it. And you will never know unless you break the limits that you set upon yourself. You know, we this, these are limits we set upon ourselves. If we, we'll never know until we break it how limitless we are. So it urges you and exhorts you to explore. <laughs> what yeah. kind of vocabulary expansion you had because of reading these books? And how much uh, your your horizon of thinking increased because of this? I, I think it has uh, had a significant effect. Has oh, to. Totally. Yeah, right? yeah. There yeah, yeah. Very good there are some very good comments. Let me take that. Uh, this is again, Ritu, you know what? Uh, fantastic, simplistic this style you wrote, Neeta. Must have been very challenging. It's awesome. It connects with homework. Okay, I think I had taken it. Yeah, you have um, taken it. Okay, Sir Siege Ghosh writes, uh, very good, Supi. Not yeah. oiling or boiling, you're doing excellently well. And Rituji, okay, thank you, thank you very much. It's about the show. Kaladhar Vorungate. When a guru talks with experience, its impact will surely be different. This is uh, when you were talking about uh, the uh, sessions that you had to take for Upanishad. I think this yeah. comment has come in there because he is also a kind of uh, practitioner of a lot of. Uh, pujas, havans, and he flies all the way from Los Angeles, go up to Himalayas and does a lot of yagnas for uh, peace. So, makes sense, yes. Sarsish, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, uh, I think we have touched all the topics and we have been here for one hour, 27 minutes, three more <laughs> minutes to go. Uh, I think we'll take four, five minutes also. Uh, few things what has been the best response that you have got from a child or or children or a group when they have uh, come up to you and they have talked to you after they have read gita because that mm. must be the most satisfying moment oh yeah 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 very uh, 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 very oh, one unexpected. More, yeah. One more critique. This is again from US. Shared it in my group, Bengali Women's Forum. Thanks, Supratim, for arranging this event. Please spread it as much as possible, Shanta, because I need these things to go as far and as wide. We all have our limitations. So let's use our network to spread it as much. Uh, check out Usha Uthup's daughter's site. I don't remember her name. Uh, Anjali. Anjali Uthup. Anjali. Anjali Uthup. And it is India Diaries. There also she has given a lot of good explanations. So uh, let's not repeat that. So let's let's make a collage of all the different talks and forward as much as possible. We need to. It's the need of the hour. We need good narratives. Okay. So what is the best response that you have got from children? I mean, uh, from some parents have written to me that their children have they have twins. Perhaps one. Uh, a parent I know has twins and she bought one book for the family, one copy of the Gita for children and both the kids got so into it and wanted it by their bedside table that in the end she ended up getting two separate ones for each of them in the same family and she said now I have to get a third one for myself because these won't part with their books, with their copies. So I really wanted it to be that, you know, I wanted it to be a friend that they could dip into any time and, you know, so I it seems to have worked and another thing that happened was this was so heartwarming for me in so many at so many levels i was speaking about the vedas and upanishads at one of the uh, one of well, at an event where we were launching it it was still very new at that time and there were some kids who had been who were taranauts fans as well in the uh, sitting in the event and um, I, I gave this, I was ended that whole session with a story from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, which I will share with you. It's a very short story and a beautiful story. Uh, so the story goes that Prajapati, who was the lord of all creatures, uh, the gods, the demons and the humans were his children. And he was at one point, he was also their guru. So they went to his gurukul and stayed there for 12 years. And once they had completed their education at the age of 24, he sent them out into the, he was about to send them out into the world when the gods came up to him and said, Father, will you give us something to remember always? You know, something that we need. Give us some mantra, something that we can invoke when we are feeling confused or whatever, when we are in doubt. And Prajapati looked at his sons, the gods, and said, Da. 
and the god said oh that's wonderful father thank you that's a beautiful and prajapati said what did you understand from that please tell me and the god said da for damyata right you are asking us to hold back self restraint damyata and prajapati said yes that's right that's exactly what i meant because he knew that his sons the gods were given to excess they would laugh hard play hard fight hard party hard they were always given to excess so he for them the message was damyata hold back restrain yourself and then they went away very happy and then the humans went to prajapati what did you tell them we also want something to remember this whole our education by and prajapati looked at them and said da and the humans said oh we love that father thank you very much and he said what did you get what did you understand when i said da and they said da for datta right you are asking us to let go not hold on to things too tight and prajapati was very proud and impressed he said yes that's exactly what i meant for he knew that his sons the humans had this habit of holding on to things very tightly even though they knew that they came without anything and they'll go away without anything they had this habit of holding on whether it was to relationships or to anger or to hate or to love or their children they would just hold on so tight they would not let so datta let it go give it away so they when he, they went away then the demons came and the demons are always thinking that he the father is partial to the gods and partial to the humans so they said what do you tell them we also want something please tell us as well and prajapati looked at them and of course he said da and because he was very fair like that and the demons said oh father that's a beautiful thought we will always keep it in our minds and prajapati said what did you get from it and they said da for uh, dayadvam right you want us to be kind and prajapati said i am so impressed my job here is done all my children have understood what they, what i want them to do because he knew that his sons the demons had this habit of uh, they had a very cruel streak a mean streak habit of being cruel for no reason at all so he said dayadvam be compassionate be kind and the, that's not the end of the story the end of the story is that just now it's monsoon season it's actually raining outside my window right now and the story is that whenever thunder rumbles across the sky it says da 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 to remind us of prajapati's messages to his children and i usually end with the story and i ask children but we are humans right so one da would have been enough for us datta why do we hear all three das and then they think about it and then i tell them because there are no gods or demons outside of ourselves all the Go. gods and demons live within us so sometimes we are in touch with the godly part of our nature it rises to the surface and i tell them and then you binge watch net netflix or you eat five packets of kurkure because you're in a very happy expansive mood and then you need to remember damyata hold back restraint and then sometimes we are our human side comes up and we are like so we just holding on to things not letting it go being very selfish and then you have to remember datta and then when the demonic side of your nature rises to the surface and you're being really mean to someone then remember dayadvam okay so i told the story and i ended with the story and then a little child who i said was very uh, big fan of the taranots she came and told me auntie remember the last line of taranots of the eighth book and i confess i had to think for a moment because i forget what i wrote in my books but the children remember it and she said remember in that the the main the main uh, good guy in the taranots is called shunya okay and it's written as s h o n and ya as his surname shunya so many children don't understand they think of it as shunya but they don't think of it as shunya and his his twin brother who makes the wrong decisions his name is sharp sharp azar like azar as in asur azur so the, and the, he she said you know in the last line of tarnots in the last book you said we both have we all have a shunya and a sharp azur inside of us who we are is who we choose to be so she remembered that line and she said you are saying the same thing now about the gods and demons are both inside right 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 and i was like i almost got tears in my eyes that this I young have, i <laughs> have tears in my eyes because this correlation you don't yeah. know what you are creating yeah. you are yeah. living it to the universe the universe gives back only positive feelings and when it comes from children who have no polluted minds yeah. and the honesty with which they speak to you yeah and when they read which you very rightly said when they read they connect it is yeah. us we underestimate them don't yeah. give them good they will give you back good yeah absolutely 
So, Give them the good books, the good stories, the Hitopadeshas, the Panchatantras. Maybe Upanishads are very difficult, but now it is not anymore. Uh, Shanta, you are doing so well. Ritu, you are doing so well. I would request Kaladhar, you are into this so much. We need to spread this as much as we can. Uh, Sarsich, uh, yes, uh, we all need a book autographed by her. That is what you are saying. We will get it. We will, we will do that. Because... Okay, friends, uh, which uh, one thing I'd like to share, which I'd like to share with you also, we need to spread it as much as we can. We can, we need to form a community alone. You do a lot. I have been seeing your Instagram posts with your publishers, with every place. Uh, I am not very sure that what uh, we can really come up with, but if there is one too many connectivities of storytellings of bringing you in, we will have a storyteller. They will do the story. You will come and sum it up. If something like that can come up to reach out as much as possible, because we need positive narratives. WhatsApp has got lots of narratives which are not positive, which is eating you up, which is eating you up. So let's, yeah, it's just. So let's let's go back to our roots, and roots are all these difficult words they were. But thanks to you and publisher and the editor who saw that little girl has the capability. And yeah. maybe it was your sole promise to yourself. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, amazing. It was an amazing session. And actually, uh, I'll take uh, Ritu says thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. We, I am. Um, thank you so thank much, you. Rupa. You're Kimari. so welcome. I enjoyed Very it. Thank you, Rupa. Lovely, lovely interviewer you were. <laughs> I look at it as the first chapter of <laughs> okay. the journey that can be started. This is not the end, but a beginning. That is how I always look. If we have met, if there has been a connectivity, there has to be a reason. It was a first reason was Swarth. I wanted to hear from the one who has done this, how. And now the Swarth is, it has to spread. Uh, Himadri Mukherjee. Uh, he says, excellent and very inspiring talk. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He has been a music listener for 50 plus years. Amazing person. Again, uh, Rupa, thanks a lot. I will bring in, uh, because I've got loads of questions and, and I am known to take things for three hours, but I will not. <laughs> Only one simple thing I would like to request that I would like to make this into storytelling sessions like you did with TED Talk. Of uh, I have that entire script with me, transcript. I'll read that again. Where you have told the small stories of Upanishads yeah. uh, one by one, that 10 brilliant sayings from wisdom yeah. in India. That is how it has to travel. The language which the people understand today, 10 best quotes, 20 best catches, yeah. 30 best things. Everything has got a number. So let's number. do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Two best stories of the day. Yeah. Your interpretation of Krishna. Do a painting on Krishna the way you see, or the God, or the Brahman. Let that come in. Let that imaginative thing go out. Let that be thematic. Let's spread as much as possible. Because this during this pandemic, the children also are going through a lot of pressure. Zoom in. Oh. Why? Everybody is shit scared. Like, I'm sorry. Everybody is scared. Like, what's happening? Oh, they are not studying. Man, give them books. Give them these literatures. Give them Panchatantras. Give them Ashwini Kumaras. Question is, do you know? Uh, are you I was about to. I was about to bring that in. The thing is that it's not. Children don't do as you say. They do as you do. So it's really up to us. I mean, they are so perceptive. They can immediately see through all your manipulation. Yeah. Absolutely. Honesty. So, they see through honesty. Yeah. Like yeah. a child cries uh, and, and a child doesn't cry in certain people's godi. And in certain people's godi, they go and cry. Mm -hmm. My mom is not a, he's not a good person. Else the child wouldn't have cried. Then I read it somewhere. There is again that soul connect, that positive energy, the vibrations coming in. A lot of science is there. I would like to bring in uh, Sonali for a small song. And 
thank you so much i will stay in touch and yeah. i will send you a few books for for the autographs to be done because i don't ask for autographs generally i only ask when the respect comes from deep down inside <laughs> that it makes sense thank you it's a, it's a position so thank you so much for coming thank it was an you. amazing session and i think this time nobody will complain that i talked too much because i didn't have a chance <laughs> no no you did not i wanted to learn maza aa gaya matlab uh, it was amazing thank you thank you thank so much i am bringing in sonali i don't know what yes. she will say yes yes i am also waiting to hear what she has yeah. to say <laughs> hi hi sonali uh such a brilliant show uh, rijuda uh mm-hmm. i am really privileged to be a part of uh, such a show or uh, uh, when i was listening to rupa i could relate to so many things from my childhood days i am a great fan of satyajit ray's feluda series as well as professor shanku series jab bhi main nihal jati thi bhai dus ka time hota tha aur mere bhaiya log poochte the ki is bar kya chahiye gift mein to mujhe books hi chahiye hoti thi aur main yahi kitabein khareed ke laati thi mujhe abhi bhi yaad hai तो एक तो ये मैंने रिलेट किया दूसरा मैंने मैंने इस बात से रिलेट किया कि मैं बीइंग अ फिजिक्स टीचर अब जब मैं बच्चों को पढ़ाती हूँ तो बहुत सारे कंसेप्ट्स मुझे क्लियर होते हैं जो मेरे समय मैं मेरे पढ़ते समय मुझे क्लियर नहीं हुए थे अब पढ़ाते समय exactly. वो बहुत अच्छे से क्लियर होता है तो ये ये दीज आर ऑल लाइफ एक्सपीरियंस एंड वन थिंग आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क यू रूपा आपकी जो किताबें हैं डू यू हैव अ हिंदी वर्जन ऑफ दीज बुक्स द गीता Uh, is definitely and is Tara Notes, Tara Notes also, because I would like to uh, have these books in my school's library. My 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 school is I am a, a physics lecturer in a common school, which is in a village. And I have studied in the English medium. And I have studied in 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 English medium. तो मुझे yeah. किताबें चाहिए मैं चाहूंगी कि मेरे बच्चे ये किताबें पढ़ें लेकिन मुझे हिंदी में चाहिए तो टू वी डू यू हैव एनी सच ऑप्शन ओनली द गीता फॉर चिल्ड्रन इज देयर इन हिंदी एंड आई थिंक द वेदास उपनिषद्स आर बीइंग ट्रांसलेटेड राइट नाउ कैन वी कैन कैन वी टेक एन अप्रोच टू डू अ रीड अलाउड हिंदी ऑफ तारा नॉट एंड लेट्स सी इफ इट वर्क्स then we can propagate that as well maybe i don't know we will talk about this and think about this because okay. the audience okay. are yeah Hindi so maybe i find for children think about it in hindi because, we don't have any wifi for children nahi 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 hai zaruri hai uh bachcho ke exposure ke liye mind uh, uske liye matlab zaruri hai ki hum बच्चों को कुछ दे और हमारे यहाँ स्कूल में मेरे यहाँ लाइब्रेरी है मैंने ही इनिशिएट करके बनवाया है और वी डू हैव बुक्स बच्चे लेते भी हैं पढ़ते भी हैं किताबें तो मैं चाहूंगी कि आपकी किताबें मेरे स्कूल की लाइब्रेरी में भी आए तो no, I... गीता को तो कोर्स yeah. में गीता को मैं मैंने मैं अपने बॉस से कहूंगी कि वो इसको ला जरूर अपनी लाइब्रेरी में रखवाएं और okay. मैं इतनी एनग्रॉस थी शो में कि मैंने कुछ सोचा नहीं मैं ऐसे रेंडमली कुछ सुना रही हूँ आप लोग I'm sure you don't need to like that. Keyboard ka sound theek hai? Rijuda, keyboard ka sound theek hai? Theek hai. Birang si hai, badi zindagi. कुछ रंग तो भरो मैं अपने तन्हाई के पास अब कुछ तो करो जब मिले थोड़ी फुर्सत जब मिले थोड़ी फुर्सत खुद से कर ले मोहब्बत जब मिले पूरी फुर्सत खुद से कर ले मोहब्बत इन दिनों दिल मेरा 
मुझसे है कह रहा and it's such an important thing it's a perfect song right shripratim like <laughs> khud se karo mohabbat that is exactly the you whole. have the permission love, yeah. yourself. love yourself when you love yourself you will be true to everybody else world. everything else. Yeah. else and such a beautiful weather you have it's raining and we yeah. talked about music and the best thing that she said about music is i don't care what the background or the music is i need words i need Word. to understand the meaning of the words and you were not a part of the discussion but then you chose something uh, which has a meaning with the words yeah. so you know there is this uh, cosmic uh, connection which happens and that is what yeah. it was uh, shonali thanks a lot i will talk to okay. you about libraries you. and things like that bye okay bye i am just and uh, uh, rupa thank you very much for coming in and i'll i'll put in a lot of things i'll i'll mail it to you let's see what all can be done let's sure, let's sure. Make, make a joint force a lot of people across the world one hour maybe in a week i think we can take things forward thank you very much it was thank you, thank thank you, you so much thank you bye. very much thank bye. you bye. 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 bye 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 good bye. night good night uh i have not uh, much to tell about anything in this uh, she is brilliant she is superb uh get the books get hold of the books uh, read them uh, spread the word as much as you can uh, donate keep it in your library if if uh, some of you have young children let them read it we have a fantastic heritage to be proud of one thing which which i realized in last 3 4 days geeta can be read even if you are in class 4 class 5 it's a handbook of how to live your life that's a different perspective which is brilliant it was an amazing session i learned maybe you people also will learn something out of this and spread the good word this wednesday in civic center we have uh, a very very uh, interesting personality uh, another very intense session that we will have with him not revealing the name the posters are out there in the page please come and watch and be there and watch it as much as you can spread this spread the link uh, because i think this is a very very positive uh, narration books reading geeta and all other books that she has written the upanishads and 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 vedas and the uh, books on finance and uh, books on scouts and guides uh, amazing what, what what a range of books and for children it it requires a special talent it requires to be the chosen one she is the chosen one we were the chosen one today i thank god for that i thank everyone who has joined in and who would be watching it uh, in future thank you very much mast raho swast raho haste raho hasate raho ek cheez aur jodunga padhte raho padhate raho good night